guys it's mary here and welcome back to my channel and today i'm gonna do a long and awaited tutorial and i've been waiting to do this tutorial for a very, very long time because some people on twitter have been asking me how i customize my desktop on my laptop this is now on my new pc so i'm gonna show you guys how i customize it to look to what i like and to look professional i guess so uh this is basically my main desktop here and it's pretty much plain but as you guys can see i've moved a lot of icons to where i want it to be so this is all my sim related icons it's all my more games and my social icons streaming and recording softwares minecraft stuff you know other programs that i have and little folders so i left a lot of big space here because i do plan to do something really really special over here and i'll show you guys in the tutorial just disclaimer out there i'm going to be using photoshop for this tutorial you can use any other softwares that you are okay with but personally for me i love photoshop and i've been paying for photoshop for the past few months and i really do love it so this is the only one i'm comfortable using i used to use paid.net but this is why over like six seven months ago so i don't know how to use it anymore so in this program i'm going to be using photoshop and paint to be able to show you guys how everything is like and for those who haven't noticed i am on windows 10 this will work for windows 8.1 windows 7 everything like that because i've had all of them before and i've done the same thing over and over so yeah let's get started sorry first and foremost what you need to do is to find out the size of your screen i have a normal pc monitor so to find that out you go and right click any space in your desktop and then it will say display settings so you click on that and then it will say customize your display you click down to the bottom and then click advanced display settings and this will show the resolution of your pc screen and mine is 1920 by 1080 so it's quite large so you need to set your blank canvas on any photo editing software to that setting so that it fits the whole screen so next thing i'm going to do is to actually take a screenshot by clicking my print screen key on my keyboard which is next to the scroll lock key and the f12 key that's that's how it appears on my keyboard it may be different to yours i don't know but that's the that's a key that's where the key is and i'm gonna open up paint and i'm gonna go ahead and paste my screen shot here so this is the whole size of my screen this is what i'll be using as a template to know exactly where to put the things i want so now i'm gonna go ahead and save that in my settings as tutorials i'm gonna type it as desktop background and click save so now i'm gonna go close paint and now i'm gonna go open up photoshop so the first thing to do with photoshop is you need to go ahead and click file and new and it will come up with this template here this will be set as either a clipboard which mirrors my screen resolution my screen resolution in pixel is 1920 by 1080 i'm going to change this resolution to 300 and i'm going to put it as transparent and leave it as that and everything else i'm going to leave the same so i'm going to click ok and it'll come up with this blank canvas here so now i'm going to click ctrl dash to zoom out and to see how it's Exactly look so now I'm gonna open up my folders and I'm gonna go ahead to find a folder where I left my stuff so I'm gonna go to pictures go to gaming and tutorials and then I'm gonna drag it over to my Photoshop and it fits exactly on the template which is what I wanted this will take a lot of time to do and I apologize if this is gonna take a while but I am pretty much a perfectionist at doing certain things so if I don't like it I'll keep redoing it till I like it the first thing I'm gonna do is to go ahead and save this as a Photoshop project file so that it makes it easier to come back to it if anything goes wrong or my Photoshop crashes because it does tend to do that occasionally and I don't know why so let's just go save this as desktop customization background and i'm gonna save that as a photoshop file so i can keep adding on top of that every single time so now i'm gonna go ahead and click on create a new layer and it will create an invincible layer on top of that uh which is absolutely fine with me uh, so that i have this as kind of like a default template kind of thing so now um, what i'm gonna do is to pick a background that i like and i am i have a bunch of pictures from google of backgrounds and i'm not really sure which one to pick i am very picky on what i want but the thing I want is a very spring kind of uh, themed wallpaper because that's going to be there for quite a while. So the picture I'm going to pick now is this and it may not be the same resolution as my actual desktop but that's fine. I can just stretch it out to reach it. So I'm going to go stretch it out now and it's 
just about where I want it to be I want it to be exactly in the middle so now I'm gonna paste that as it is and obviously it's not exactly a perfect picture but I'm gonna go and edit it a little bit more so I'm gonna go over here and go to adjustments and then add some brightness and contrast I love having brightness to my photos I don't know why but I really really do so and I'll add the brightness here and then add a little bit of contrast so it looks really nice and then I'm gonna go back to adjustments and go to vibrance over here and then make it a little bit more vibrant which is quite nice to look at so I really do like that I, I may or may not add saturation depending on the picture but it's up to you what you guys gonna do so next thing I'm gonna do is to go to adjustments again and I may add some hue and saturation because I do like to change the colors of some pictures a little bit to make it you know more personal towards me and I'm gonna go ahead and maybe add a little bit of hue make it even more yellowish or something depending how I feel I'm not really sure because I don't want to change it too much because the colors are really nice enough as it is I don't know I think I might just make it a little bit more yellowish here and then add a little bit of saturation a little bit and then drop it back down a little bit I know it doesn't seem like a big difference to you but to me it really does so that's what I really like so now I'm gonna go ahead and press control and click on all these things together and then right click it and then go down to merge layers and I'm gonna merge them all together so it, it sticks as one massive layer and that's perfect fine with me next I'm gonna go to filter and I'm going to blur and then I'm going to go to gradient blur this is a, the blur that I love using my thumbnails or my photos everything like that because it, this is a very very soft blur I keep it as normally either five or roughly between five and ten because anything above that is a bit too blurry for me and I don't really like it so I'm gonna keep this one as six because I don't want the background to outshine the icons and stuff so yeah I'm gonna keep it as that and then press ok and to see what's going on you can obviously see here I'm gonna go ahead and click on soft light to make the picture or the background on top of that very like see-through kind of thing so it's easier for me to see where the icons are and everything like that and then I'm gonna change it back at the end before I finish so next thing that I want to do is to go over here and click on this rectangle tool here and then I'm gonna click fill so I'm gonna fill it with I'm going to keep it as white so I can do an overlay colour and I'm going to keep the stroke as 1.6 and just keep it in. So I'm going to go over to my first picture here and then I'm going to get just about close enough to it or press control and plus get a little bit closer and see what, what you're working with. So I'm going to go ahead over here and I am going to go ahead and outline a little box to where I want things to be and this box can be changed over time it's not, not something that has to be done right then then it can be changed over time um, and that's perfectly fine with me don't forget that each and every time you do this you always have to make sure that you save the file so that just in case something goes wrong you can go back to the original file so it's perfectly fine for you next I'm gonna click Control T and that will make this little uh, option for me to stretch it and stuff so I'm gonna stretch it just about over here so I have a little bit more to work with I'm just not exactly sure yet just like maybe this will be fine and I'm gonna go and leave it as that and click apply next thing I'm going to do is to go ahead and click on blending options here and then I'm gonna add a stroke to it so I'm gonna add a little nice stroke it may be invincible it may not be I don't really know how I feel about it just yet but I'm gonna add a little light pink stroke because the background is kind of like well light pinkish reddish kind of color so I'm gonna go for a pastel kind of stroke and so far it looks good with a soft light blend mode and that's what I really like I actually quite like that so next thing I'm gonna do is to go ahead and go to color overlay and okay I did something wrong over here so let me just go okay first before I continue with that I'm gonna go ahead and go back to rectangle tool and I'm gonna get rid of the stoke so all you have to do is just click on it and then click this little dash red thing in there to get rid of the stroke in between and I'm gonna go back to my color overlay by double clicking and then pick on the color that I want and I want a very very pastel color so I'm gonna pick something from the background that I can see here so let's say something like this color or maybe something like this but a little bit more pastel if I feel like it I think pastel pink will be fine with me yeah just a little bit more pastel this color is just just about okay for me and I really do like it so let's go ahead and save that and I'm gonna bring the opacity to roughly 50% because I don't want it too opaque actually I might drop it down just a little bit more to 30% because I want my backgrounds to stand out more than anything so let's go press ok with that 
and let me just see how it turns out so far let me just click this back onto normal so so far it looks pretty opaque and i don't really like that so let's go ahead and go back to the color overlay and let's go and find a nicer color let's go and find something like this color over here let's go find something like that maybe that that looks quite nice and i do like that actually so let's go ahead and save that as it is let's go back to the stroke and let's see how the other colors are like overlay is not bad but i feel like the soft light is probably the best one that i like um it looks nicer and is less harsh on the eyes and everything like that so let's go back and then change this back to soft light again or overlay again okay and then it, so that we can see what we're working with so so far everything is looking good so i think the theme is in the right layer i'm not exactly sure but it looks like it's in the right section that i want it to be so i'm gonna go ahead and duplicate this box here to go for everything else so let's go duplicate layer and click ok doesn't matter what you want to call it and then let's go and drag the box somewhere else so i'm going to go make sure it's layered with the same box that like before and i'm going to go and drag it over let's see here i'm going to drag it over here because it like leaves a nice gap in between the other boxes and also it looks really really nice so i'm gonna go ahead and duplicate multiple layers so that i have a lot of it and then i'm gonna drag it over and make sure it's the same width in between each box and also the same height so as you can see it comes up with pink lines and stuff and it shows the measurements in between each box so that shows that it's exactly perfectly aligned i'm gonna go and leave it as that and then i'll go and duplicate more boxes and drag it back down to these ones over here obviously with the more icons you have have, the more things you likely will change about it and that's perfectly up to you you do what, what you feel is better for yourself and your computer and what looks good for you uh, but this is how I like to do it and this is how I like to do my thing so yeah so this one is the one that's gonna be the smaller box so I'm gonna go and leave it there and then I'm gonna press again Control T come up with this little outline here and then whoopsie and then I'm gonna go and drag it up to just about where I want it so I want it to be sort of halfway to the other boxes so it looks okay and I kind of like it like this I believe yeah this looks all right to me so I'm gonna go ahead and click on that and then click apply and it's perfectly fine there I'm gonna go back and duplicate another box another big box and drag it back down here so it fits perfectly with the other lined box that I have on the left and also the one above as well. So it's perfectly fine there and I like that. And then we go ahead and duplicate another set of boxes and drag it over to this side here and it is perfectly aligned and I love that. And <laughs> this is one of the reasons why I love Photoshop because it's so easy to work with. It takes a little bit, little bit of practice but I can tell you that it's definitely worth it. I still have a lot of things to learn about Photoshop but I am slowly getting there and I really do enjoy using Photoshop a lot. And I think this should be the smaller box. Yes, it is. And let's go ahead and duplicate layer of that smaller box. We drag it over to the Minecraft games over here. So as you guys can see, everything is perfectly aligned. And I'll tell you the reason why I want everything to be aligned. Because when I start adding the words into what things are, I want them to look perfect. And when it doesn't look perfect, it gives me sincere anxiety. Like I get so anxious about everything and it's just, it's pretty scary. So since we have all the icon boxes set, I'm gonna go add one last icon to my little bin folder here. I love my bin folder, like it's the most important folder of them all. So I can chuck away things <laughs> and it's pretty cool. So let's go ahead and duplicate the last smaller folder. And let's go scroll down to the bottom here. Make sure it's perfectly aligned with all the other boxes. And it seems to be overlapping the bottom thing just a little bit more i think i'll just gonna leave it here and not make it exactly aligned yeah it's touching the bottom a little bit and i don't really like that so let's go ahead and let's leave it this way and i'm gonna press ctrl t again and then i'm gonna go drag it a little bit smaller than usual so it covers the whole box and it seems like the boxes are really really large but the larger the better to be honest so i think it's perfectly fine just like that and then apply that section there as well so as you can see like everything's 
pretty much everywhere um this box here i'm gonna go ahead and stretch it a little bit larger because it is my folders box and i do want it to have a lot of folders inside over time because i may add more folders to it i want it to be much larger so i have a lot more things to work with than just to be suffocated with a certain amount of folders and yes yeah, so i'm gonna head and apply that there this one here is for my other programs icon so i'm gonna go control t and drag that just a little bit more down to the bottom most likely to not probably reach the bottom because i don't want it to be too stretched out i guess but i don't want it to be too short either so let's go i think this will be stretched out enough and then let's go ahead and apply that transformation as well so all the boxes are pretty much laid out to where i want it to be and that is perfectly fine with me so i'm gonna go ahead and save my project now let's go on to the fonts and the words and stuff like that so let's go into this tech tool here and we're gonna use the horizontal type text tool so let's go ahead and click on that and then click on anywhere in your background that you're using apart from the boxes because it will start to write in the box so let's go click over here and let's go and type sims i like this font here so i'm gonna go over here or you can use this thing up here but i personally feel better using this i'm using this font here kg always a good time which you can get from the fonts.com or any other font website that have it i love kg always a good time because it's really cute it's a very very nice girly font to me i personally have always loved it ever since i got it next thing you want to do is to select what size your font is going to be and mine's roughly going to be either 24 or 18 depending on how it turns out on top of the boxes and i'm going to leave the color as white so let's go ahead and now move this font over here so as you guys can see it's a little bit large and to be honest i don't really like that so let's go ahead and go back to here and let's go change it now to 18 but 18 to me seems pretty small so you can change the font however you like it then we're going to go on right click the text layer we're going to go to blending options and i'm going to go to drop shadow i love adding shadow to my text it makes it stand out a lot more and i really do like that so i'm going to drop the size back down a little bit um i'm not exactly sure size i'll keep it at six the distance i'm gonna drop it to most likely six as well the spread seems absolutely fine but i'm gonna drop it to probably four so yeah and i keep it at multiply because i don't know why i've always had it multiply and i've i don't know why i just always do it, i don't really see a difference with any of the other layers but anyway i keep it multiply and then i keep it as a black shadow and then i keep it at 75 percent opacity so what i'm going to do is to go to color overlay and i'm going to color the actual text as the same color as the box surprisingly because i like it that way so i'm gonna probably raise the opacity to roughly 50 percent so that the text stands out a little bit more than the box does and i am okay with that it looks all right um yeah so i like that next thing i'm gonna do is to go to stroke and add a lovely stroke but i'm gonna change the stroke blend mode to normal so it looks like that but i'm not gonna keep the pink because i don't really like the pink so i'm gonna go and have it completely black and that's perfectly fine as it is i'm gonna go and drop the size of the stroke to three and then it looks nice i like that a lot and i'm gonna go back to overlay and drop probably the opacity of the color overlay down to 40 percent and i do like that but let me change it to pinkish i'm gonna change the color to purplish pink which is the color that i actually really like so i think it goes with the text i'm not exactly sure actually i'm gonna change the color to blue the bluish green color turquoise kind of teal color it looks really really nice and i do like it with my background so i'm gonna change it to that and i'm gonna keep it as that and click ok so here is my text that i'm going to use and yeah i really do like that so now what i need to do is to duplicate the text onto other layers so i'm going to move it to another box on top of this one and make sure it's exactly the same size and you can tell the same size by the pink line and keep it as that then i'm gonna go ahead and go click on that box to see what it is and this one is other games okay so go back to the top and let's go ahead and get the text tool again highlight it and then type in other games so as you guys can see it seems a little bit large and it seems to be overlapping the box which is not a good look let's go change the size now back down to 16 and that seems okay with me that seems perfectly fine and i like that it looks good 
so I'm going to do the same size for the Sims one so it doesn't look out of place so change it down to 16 and to make it a little bit more fuller I'm going to add the Sims instead of the Sim I like that it looks good so make sure it's centered in both aspects as well yep and make sure this one's centered as well it's very hard to center all these things we have to make sure it's all looking perfect and there you go it's all centered it looks really really good and I really do do like that so now let's go ahead and duplicate this new layer of the other games bit duplicate the new layer and let's go okay we're gonna go move this one over here and as you guys can see it that now seems to be overlapping the other text but it's not because you're gonna change the text so let's go ahead and call this one university so as you guys can see it looks really nice it looks really cute and I like that a lot so let's make sure it's perfectly aligned and it is and it's perfectly to go there and next thing I'm going to do is to duplicate the same thing again and then move it down to over here make sure it's aligned with the thing at the top and also with the box down below so it's just centered and I'm going to go overwrite that and call it folders and it looks really good there and I'm going to go duplicate that box that text again and move it over to here make sure it's aligned with the text above it and the text on the left so that it looks really really cool and yeah everything is perfectly fine as you can see all the measurements are all the same which is perfect if if some measurements aren't the same then you have to keep moving it around or keep resizing it to make sure it's all perfectly aligned yeah let's go and leave that just exactly there overwrite it with a text tool and we're going to call this social we're going to duplicate the social text and drag it over to the next spot which is my recording or streaming software so I guess I can say YouTube stuff I guess I'll call it YouTube stuff because it is mainly for YouTube so I'll make sure it's aligned with the text above and also with the text on the left hand side and it's having trouble aligning okay now it's aligned so let's go ahead and override that as well and call it YouTube and make sure it's aligned because once the text change it makes it harder to align it I think this is perfect so let's just keep it like that duplicate the YouTube text now and drag it back down to over here and this is my minecraft section i know minecraft will normally come under other games but i do have a lot of things to do with minecraft so i'll keep it as a separate space i guess and it's not really finding centered things so this is going to be very very hard okay i finally found it so keep it there rename that to now minecraft and that looks really good there i like that so let's just make sure it's perfectly aligned and it seems like it is. If it's not that perfectly aligned like it is now, as long as the line goes in between all the other texts and stuff like that, it is perfectly fine. So I'll leave it as it is here and I really do like this. Okay, so now let's go duplicate that now and then move it over to this one so this one will be my other program and um, I'm gonna call it program so it's perfectly on top of the box and let's go ahead and I will actually leave it like that so this is kind of like it has the same measurements on either side it's straight for the middle of all the other text so it's perfectly fine for me so I'm gonna leave it there and duplicate it one last time for the bin folder and drag it down to the bin so this one's gonna be an easy one because you have to, all you have to do is just resize it so let's go to bin let's go type that as bin and let's go and drag it over it and it should have the exact thing in the middle of the box and it has the same measurements as the thing above it as well so let's go leave that as there and these are all my words for on top of my icons in the boxes done so i'm going to show you how i want to customize it personally towards me and you could do this as well it's really up to you but this is how i want it to be like and i just like it this way this is a little trick that i'm going to do so let's go ahead and go on a text tool and let's go add a text let's go just call it k and then we're gonna highlight that and then we're gonna go to our uh, character options and we're gonna go and find a font that allows me to do boxes vectors and stuff like that so this is the box that the one that i want to use i want to do the kg flavor and frames three regular and you can find this on the font.com and this is i'm gonna use it as that so you guys can't see it that well of course but this is the little boxes come up with and these boxes change to what letter you use so if i use o it turns out like this which is perfectly fine with me and i'm gonna go and do control t to stretch out the the thing so now 
it's stretched out this way so you guys can see what you're working with and it's quite large that's perfectly fine with me and let's go leave us that and let's go and press this move tool and click apply the transformation yes and we're gonna go highlight the text again and we want to see O or P L okay L is what I wanted so this is L so what I'm gonna do now is to go into my folders and go to pictures and I'm gonna click on life I have a lot of pictures from over time of with my friends my boyfriends things like that I'm gonna click on this picture over here from my Barcelona trip when I went on in 2012 with my best friends so I'm gonna go crop that down to roughly not not to distort the image just enough to where I, I can see enough of it so I'm gonna go and add that to the background of this and then I'm gonna move the I letter on top of that so it will come up like something like this and I know it's really really bad <laughs> and I still have a lot of things to work with so I'm gonna go press ctrl T and just work it around the frame uh, I don't want to distort it too much because then it, it will turn out looking horrible and just so ratchet so as you guys can see it's not exactly distorted but it's not exactly you know all up in everyone's grill and stuff like that so this is probably the best photo that I can get on it I believe I'm gonna go stretch it out just a little bit let's go click back on the picture and I'm gonna go try and change some things around and then I'm gonna get the eraser tool over here and just click the eraser tool and then I'm gonna go and apply that to the photo yes and then I'm gonna go and erase all the other things on top of the photo frame because no one's gonna see it but me before I merge both of the layers together I'm gonna go ahead and duplicate the eye text again so that I have it there case and drag it out and here it is so now I'm gonna go ahead and merge the pictures together by clicking on control and then click on the next picture and then right click and click merge layers so now they're all merged together so it moves together like this and it makes it easier to work with so I like that a lot so I'm gonna leave that as it is there I'll I will rotate it later on but so far I'm gonna leave it as this until I finish all the photos and all the text next thing I want to do is to now add another photo and I'm gonna go and pick one with me and my boyfriend and I'm gonna have this one where we went on our Amsterdam trip together for his 21st birthday and let's go ahead and drop this down in size and let's go ahead and put that somewhere behind that so it's not going to be too distorted but it's not exactly going to be perfect so yeah i like this one a lot so let's go ahead and paste that and place the folder move the frame on top of the picture to make it turn out like this which is really nice i like this one a lot and let's go and move the picture around and this is perfect so it turned out exactly perfectly as i wanted to before i merge them i'm gonna go ahead and copy the frame out again so that i have a little layout for the next picture i'm gonna add and then i'm gonna merge the layers together now and yep it now is merged i can move it wherever i want and it's pretty cool the next picture i want to do is a picture from maybe my family or a picture of my partner again or my friend so I'm gonna picture of me and my best friend from university on a night out I know it's not, not exactly the best picture ever and I don't want to add any filters to the pictures because they're already filtered enough but it's a picture of me and my best friend on a night out for around second year and it's pretty cool I love this photo so much it was such a happy time and it was pretty cool so now what we're gonna do is to place it move the frame on top and so it turns out like that and then we're gonna go and move that frame together and it looks perfectly fine and I really do like that it looks really cool we may not have exactly the best pictures ever but it's still something and I love the way it looks so I like it we're gonna go and copy the frame duplicate it just in case and move it away to somewhere over there and then we're gonna go and merge that picture and the frame together so now it's now merged and it sticks together and it's perfectly fine so I'm happy with the way it's turned out and now the last picture here is probably gonna be one of my family this is a good one that I have and it was from my parents 25th wedding anniversary which is ultimate goals right there and so I'm gonna go and put this here it's not exactly the best picture to add to this kind of frames but I think I might stretch the frame because I don't want to show it to picture so I'm going to stretch the frame in this one photo just to make sure it matches so I'm going to go and place that and let's go and stretch the frame just to add to the picture and I'm going to go reduce the size just a little bit and it should be able to fit now 
roughly and let's go stretch it over there so and then let's go and place that and then move the frame on top of the picture and it's perfectly in the frame which is what i've wanted we're now done with the pictures let's go ahead and merge the final layers together because we don't need to duplicate the frames anymore and it's merged so the pictures are now stuck together which is what i've always wanted so time to add the text to the pictures i'm not gonna use this font but i'm gonna use roughly something like this so let's go ahead and duplicate the bin tag move it out and we're gonna go ahead and change some things so no drop shadow no color overlay and no stroke so what's gonna be is just a plain raw layer and i'm just gonna change it to how i want it so since the frames are in white the text is gonna be changed to black so the color here is gonna go straight to black and I'm gonna change the font to something nicer. Some fonts are really nice, but some fonts don't actually have numbers in them. So unfortunately it doesn't really turn out that way. So the font I'm gonna use is the Ostrich Sands Condensed Light. And I think I got this from the font.com. I'm not exactly sure. So I'm gonna add a little bit of boldness to it because it looks pretty plain and I don't actually like that. So now that it's appeared bold, I'm gonna go ahead and move it around to where it's best. And it looks good there. So I'm gonna go ahead and leave that as it is there. I like that. I'm gonna go ahead and duplicate the font to the other pictures so now that i have added the text to all of my picture frames and all my pictures and stuff i'm gonna go ahead and merge the pictures to the text so this picture here which is the bus lane one i'm gonna go merge that with this one right here by pressing control right click the picture and then go and click merge layers so now the layers are merged as buffalo 2012 and then i'm gonna do the rest with all the other pictures so now that all the pictures are now merged together i'm gonna go ahead and arrange them in the any way and form that i want so i'm gonna go move this over here and move that over there as well so move some things around and I'm going to put this one right at the top. I'm going to move this and then rotate it a bit by pressing Ctrl T. And then I'm going to go and apply that transformation. And I'm going to go and move this one over here and press Ctrl T again and rotate that just a little bit. And if you, you don't like the way it snaps to certain objects, you can go ahead and remove this by pressing Ctrl and then move it around so you can move around anywhere you feel like it more freely. But sometimes it does snap nearest objects. The only way to stop that is to actually hold a picture where you want it and then let go of your mouse and then let go of Ctrl and it will stay in one place. Just like that. Place that transformation as well. I'm going to actually move my bus learner one over here and i'm gonna press ctrl t again and rotate that just a little bit because i like things being rotated it looks nicer when it's rotated I, I don't know why but it does and i like it better that way or should i rotate no nah, i rotate it this way so it's completely different to the other frames and it looks a little bit like a sticker to a wall and i'm gonna press ctrl and then move it around just a little bit let go and then and then i'm gonna apply the transformation and then the last picture is this one and it may seem to overlap a little bit but that's perfectly fine that's and press ctrl t rotate that just a little bit and let's go move this one just a little bit up and i like that so now i'm gonna place that and there is my background so this is what i'm gonna be using for now you can change the background however you want it it's really up to you but i this is how i want it to be so far and before i save it i'm gonna go ahead and let go of the background picture so remove the desktop picture right here and i'm going to keep this background as normal and i like the way it's turned out it looks pretty cool so let's go ahead and save that as a jpeg and save and keep it at 12 maximums because you want the highest of the quality so let's go ahead and save that minimize photoshop and my folders and we, we're gonna right click on anywhere in our desktop apart from the icons and right click Go to personalize and it'll come up with something like this. So I'm gonna go ahead and stretch it just a little bit more so you guys can see what you're working with. And I'm gonna go and click on browse. So it will browse the picture that I want to add as my background. So I'm gonna go to gaming and tutorials and I'm gonna go click on desktop customization background. And, and here it is. As you guys can see, the background fits everywhere that I want it to fit. It fits all my little stuff over here. I may have to adjust the Minecraft folder just a little bit because it was a little bit off, but that's something easy that I can do. Every other icon 
on here so far is perfectly fine and i'm gonna do that off camera so i hope you guys enjoy this tutorial so it's a little bit long i'm trying i'm gonna try and edit down just a little bit but i wanted to go in in depth explanation to how i did my desktop when i tweeted it out a few months ago so i know you guys really, really liked it so i really appreciate your comments and everything like that on it and i hope you guys get to do this for yourself i really would like to see so if you do do this and you really do like how it's turned out then feel free to tweet it to me or send it to me on instagram i'm happily fine or even inbox it to me on youtube i'll happily find to look at it and check it out it's so cool i really do like this and I, and I hope you guys like it too so thank you guys for watching if you like this video give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you're new around here it does mean a lot and i will see you all in my next video thanks for watching bye